All right, it's a beautiful time on television and a very good day to you. It's so nice to know that you're there and uh, you are, I'm here too on the program International Forum. Well, I'm standing in today for Wisin Omasho, who is on vacation. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at uh, the life and time of uh, the late president of the United Arab Emirates, uh, talking about uh, Sheikh Khalifa. And uh, as we speak now, it's still a time of mourning in United Arab Emirates, uh, whereby people uh, really cannot just forget uh, the leader. One guy uh, that uh, people uh, will always uh, recognize the fact that he brought glory to United Arab Emirates. Na Emirates. Now, for most of you that travel to Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and uh, some other provinces of uh, United Arab Emirates, you will uh, see that uh, that's uh, one place that uh, a lot of people want to be uh, because of the development and uh, because of uh, uh, the massive infrastructural developments in these places. Well, to look at the life and time of uh, the uh, late president of uh, United Arab Emirates, we're so privileged to have Nowita Ibotako uh, here this afternoon. So you welcome to the program International Forum. Thank you. Good afternoon, viewers. And also barrister Dr. Awo Osaige is also here. You're welcome to the program International Forum. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And good afternoon, viewers at home. Okay. And uh, my name is Evan Sunoko here. You're welcome one more time. So, gentlemen, uh, as we set uh, the ball rolling, let's examine the uh, late uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, talking about uh, the president now, uh, talking about uh, uh, Sheikh Khalifa, uh, one guy that people cannot uh, forget in a hurry. Well, I do know that uh, war leaders, uh, they are going to have reasons to really learn one or two things uh, to, uh, from uh, this guy, a good guy. I'll start with uh, Nowita Ibutako. Yes, uh, truly, it is a dialectic, you know, the life and times of uh, Sheikh Khalifa. Dialectic in the sense that it has been documented. Uh, people have written, you know, enormously about him and uh, comprehensively about his character because he was an exceptional leader. You know, there was. The Emirates was there before he became the president, you know, in, in uh, 20, uh, 2004, yeah. you know. And uh, he, he came in and he proved himself, you know. Uh, he succeeded his father. His father was, you know, was there for several years. And as soon as he came in, there was this horror, a wonder of horror that came into governance in United uh, Arab Emirates, you know. By 1971, the Kingdom became uh, independent from Great Britain. Absolutely. And, and that marked a watershed, you know. And under his leadership, he brought unprecedented, uh, you know, uh, glory to that country. And we have several Emirates that are made of the UAE. Uh, yeah, yeah, UAE. Yeah. And yeah, he proved himself, yeah. And, he is a perfect example of a fantastic leader, you know. And he reminds me quickly, go memory lane. So before he had this city, St. Petersburg, sometime after the Russian Revolution, mm -hmm. they call it a petrol guy, petrol guy. Mm -hmm. said, but it was this uh, 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 leader, St. Peter, that brought glory. Though he was, he, he, though he was a ruthless leader, what he brought, he, he built St. Petersburg. That's one of the pride of Soviet Union today, Russia and all that. So he remembered quickly about that guy. So Khalifa, Sikh Khalifa, was a wonderful guy. Look at, just as uh, the analogy from uh, Madrid toilet. So many Nigerians go to, to Dubai. Dubai. They don't know. Abu Dhabi and others. They don't know how it started. You know, and the country is rich in oil and gas. It, you know, and the guy came in and performed wonders. He, he ensured infrastructural development of that, you know, country, you know. And uh, what we see going, you know, in that country is as a result of his, uh, uh, you know, excellent leadership. So it's a, he, 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 he is a positive example of what you should have as leader in modern terms, you know. He has brought glory. He's considered in bringing honor. He's considered in leaving the people from where uh, his father left them. He brought honor 
And in fact, some of us did not even know where, uh, you know, that uh, the connection between uh, uh, Dubai and United uh, Arab Emirates. Yeah. So we were thinking uh, Abu Dhabi, the capital, is somewhere else or something like that. Mm. But it's just part of the seven Emirates that made up the republic, mm. uh, made up the country. Yeah. So we are, we are, we've seen a leader that's a personal example that, that has even challenged a country like Nigeria that is, that is sitting on countless wells of oil and gas. Okay, let me pause you <laughs> and uh, call so, the is it, barista it, it, I again. Now, uh, we're looking at uh, Sheikh uh, Khalifa here uh, because um, I've not been to Dubai, neither have I been to Abu Dhabi, but um, uh, for some of you that may have traveled out, of course, one thing that stands clear is when you're talking about um, uh, the way modern cities should look. Uh, it's, it's Dubai, it's Abu Dhabi that people would point out to. Now, uh, in as much as we are trying to estray the life of Khalifa, uh, what do you think actually kept him ongoing? Uh, you know, we understand the fact that uh, he took over from the father. Only now that his brother has taken over from him, which we are going to be talking about later. Uh, mm -hmm. But from your own perspective, what do you think is that thing, that factor, uh, that kept him ongoing, that made him to see the need that, look, I need to make uh, this uh, emirates, uh, this seven uh, provinces, if you like now, as, uh, you know, on the international uh, space, uh, I was I give. Thank you very much. Uh, Sheikh Khalifat is a phenomenal and um, outstanding leader of all time. Now, you talked about what kept him going. The truth is that what actually kept him going is vision. You know, when you are a visionary leader, you don't see what achievement you have attained. You know, you keep thinking of what you've not done, how to better the lives of your people. I think that's what actually kept him going. You see, is it not um, John F. Kennedy that said, ask not what your country will do for you, but rather ask what you will do for your country. He was talking to his countrymen, and all he meant to say was that, if we keep doing the bit we could, we'll bring America to where it should be. And now, if you look at this great leader, having taken over from his father, and he could have sat down like the average you know, leader around the world, especially the third world nation, that want to have a gate to himself. More so, it's even a dynasty. You know, this is a democratic um, structure that we now have to, you know, politics can go around. You know, this by divine providence, he would have just said, well, whatever it is, I need not do much anymore. I, I see a lot of discipline in them. I've been with them. I've seen a couple of them. I've traveled around this year, year, year and I've seen a good number of them. And I, I see the way they take the jobs so seriously, so committed to their work. And I've taken a leader like that to have led them over this, uh, this 18 years of his life. You know, now he died at 73. And look at how he had utilized what 18 years have done for a nation like Dubai. And then the UAE, UAE. and Abu Dhabi and all and other Dubai. provinces. Dubai. Yeah, Dubai is, a, is a, you know, look at the Burj Khalifa that is, that is what's a wow to the entire world. You know, you, you're looking at leaders like that, it's all about vision. Because you need to be visionary to keep, on, to keep yourself on course. Because with the kind of enormous wealth that is there, you may be distracted like most other countries' leaders are distracted. You know, they are distracted the moment they, their achievement is that I've become leader. The achievement is that I'm president or I'm leader today. And that's their own achievement. But this man looked at his country, he looked at that region, and he thought it, you know, thought it wise to advance their cause. And you know, this is a, you know, kind of a place where we don't have this some desert and we need to use a whole lot of technology. He didn't put the money, like, let me build some couple of houses. He started thinking ahead and working with other, you know, great experts all around the world. He didn't sit down there and say, I'm, I'm Kabi, you see, or I'm Sheikh, or whatever. But he looked at his strove for excellence. And he went around the world, and he brought the best of hands. So what you see happening in Dubai is not rocket science. It's not a mystery. It's not, mir it's not magic. Or like we say, it's miracle. So it's some diligent work. <laughs> and I've seen them work, that's what I'm saying. I remember the time I traveled and I, I actually looked around. I didn't see, I couldn't find any dirty parts on the road. Mm. 
I, and I was curious and I wanted to know if where I was standing was still this planet Earth or somewhere, <laughs> or maybe I've gone somewhere else. So I begged my cabman, please take me to a construction site. Let me feel the sand to be sure. Whether you're on Earth. Whether I'm on Earth or not, because <laughs> you can't find a place. I've never been in places in other parts I've traveled to that you won't find some sand rough so edges. Everywhere was clean. And then I said, they pay people so well and they manage this thing until I found the construction site. What I'm trying to say in essence is, this thing can happen anywhere. It's where you allow the laws to work. You are not practicing favoritism, ethnicity and all whatnot, nepotistic tendencies. Put all this leadership management and be prudent. Don't arrogate so much. Look at the way they dress. Very simple in their long pattern. They don't display anything. You know, it's only in other parts of the world you see people trying to tell you how many private jets they own. They are all about their people because they know one day they are going to leave this world and what will be remembered or what people will talk about them of is going to be what they have left behind, the great legacy they are leaving behind. And look at the Emirates. It's an amazing one. And you, you, saw, you are so... In short, when you get into Dubai or get into Abu Dhabi, you are excited for no reason. You are you the joy stands up because the ambience, the, uh, the the architectural masterpiece of how they put these things together, it's what gets you wondering. Even Americans fly down to wonder, like Steve, having who would go there and say, "How did you do this in 50 years? Mm. How did it happen?" He's everywhere say, "What? How did this happen?" You know, look at the kind of technology. Look at what they are put to work. Why? Because they are ready to pay the right price. Not in some other countries where you are allowed giving money to do some stuff. They start pulling down the money and start sharing it among themselves, talking about their stomach infrastructure, all in the name of political arrangements, and then blaming themselves and blaming past governments and those that were there before you. Every true leader should face the problem. Okay. All right. Now, um, which I, it. Uh, yeah, no, which I go to echo. Yes. Um, let us look at the personality of, of uh, Sheikh Khalifa, because uh, for some people, uh, they will tell you that it's probably all due to his religious background. Why some will say that uh, it's all due to his, his personality? Well, we cannot also say that uh, the father did not do much. Uh, but even as we try to praise uh, Khalifa here this afternoon, uh, can we also try to look at the father? Are you sure that the father probably started the success uh, that uh, yeah. the late president achieved after his time of rulership? Yeah, his father actually started the success because his father groomed him. When he was born, be, be a, a dynasty. Being a prince too? A prince in the system. Mm. So his father ensured he got the best. He had the best education. Exactly. And his father exposed him. When I was looking at the profile, the father exposed him excellently well. At, as a teenager, he was already <laughs> in the system. At a point, he was, money, he was Minister of Defense. Yes. He was even in the military. Exactly. At the time, he was chairman, petroleum, as, uh, something council, you know, in the uh, in, uh, United... So, the yeah. father probably prepared him? Prepared him. He was, he was groomed. And he, he, he became, uh, a, you know, a, a positive factor for his father. Because there are, there are some children who will go in there and mess up. We've had uh, people who have sought opportunities. When they come on board, they just tumb, tumble the entire thing. But, but in uh, Sheikh uh, Khalifa, he, he was an excellent uh, builder. Just as I said, a, a masterful visionary, a sophisticated leader by, by excellence. That's it. He knew what he wanted. He had, he had, in fact, today we talk about uh, United uh, uh, UAE, is the third largest economy in the Middle East. Exactly. That's the Arabian Emirates. I mean, it, 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 I'm, it's, a, it's an island. Before Emirates now came together, so he, 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 his father prepared him, and he did not disappoint his father. Mm. He was a child that was that was prepared, and he was a child that had mission, and he was able to utilize the resources of the country, oil and gas. Look at the magnificent building. Look at the look at the living stand up. Yeah, I just said it's been everywhere, to, everywhere. To all high rise buildings. Look at the all streets. All of them. As you said, even Americans, they want to come to they, they go there for vacation. To, to come oh, and yes. do 
you know, on vacation. Mm. Can't we do that in Nigeria? It is challenging us. It is, it is, it is, it is heart wrenching when we talk about such magnificent examples in such a place. And here, Nigeria is seated on, uh, you know, more or less a bottomless pit. Hmm. Well, you, you let us be mindful of the way we say Bottomless that pit <laughs> of oil and gas. I know the thing will expire, but we still have some years to go. Nigeria is, is loaded. Okay. Now, so he was prepared. He, 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 he has performed wonderfully well. He has laid him. Look at him. Look at the torrent of tributes mm. coming from world leaders mm. all over the world. Don't you see? Is it for uh, 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 Joe Biden? Name them. All of them. Fant fantastic diplomats. A, a leadership that placed Dubai, uh, that placed uh, his country 50 years. For what you saw in, uh, in uh, when you went to the country, yeah. is it not 50 years ahead of ahead other nations? Of other nations. So it, it is a challenge. Mm. I think uh, the new leader should learn from this great guy. Okay. Now, <laughs> I, 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 I was I a little wonder if it has anything to do with his uh, religion. Uh, he was a Muslim, uh, you exactly. know, in, in his own right and all that. So, uh, do you think um, his religion may also have prepared him for uh, all that he achieved? Thank you very much. Um, religion, you see, we apply ourselves to these values. Mm. You see, it's the value you place. I remember years ago, I once mentioned off camera that I had something to do in Lagos State government. Then Tinubu was governor. We needed to facilitate some money. And now, when trying to appreciate an Alahaji, we gave him money. He said, we shouldn't bother. And I said, no, but we needed to appreciate you. And when we gave it, ah, sir, you didn't even count the money. He said, no. He said, as a Muslim, I'm not supposed to count a gift. Mm. Whatever you give to me, I'm okay with it. Mm. Thank you so much. Mm. That is what he told me. Mm. And that got me thinking. Now, look, when you look at this man, I remember, like I mentioned, in one of my trips too, I met a young 24 years old who had a Lamborghini and um, playing with his children, two lovely children of his. And I was wondering, is this still normal? You have a very cool job. That's one of the toys in his compound anyway. A Lamborghini. A Lamborghini, mm -hmm. just 24 years. And uh, he was still doing the domestic stuff. And then I was admiring the car. And I said, I can, I can get in and sit, you know. There's nothing there. You know, there's nothing special. It's just life, you know. I, I could see the reception and the way he regarded me. You know, in my own country, we are not the same race. In my own country, I have not been treated that way, hmm. you know, despite my education and, um, you know. Well, in your own country, you are not of the same religious background. So even if I'm not of the same religious background, he's a Muslim. <laughs> and, you know, you, know, you see, they, they have seen this religion as, religion is to bless lives. Hmm. It's not to hunt them. Wow. Religion is to make people love you and love your so-called religion. Now, look, yes. at, well, let's think about religion. <laughs> uh, Muhammad that we talk about, the prophet Muhammad, preach peace. In a small there were a lot of issues around. And he, was, he led a very simple life. Jesus Christ, same way. So when we now begin to talk about religion, 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 these men are practicing true religion. Even your Bible tells you that uh, true religion is when you visit the less privileged, wow. the downtrodden, and helping them. I think that's what they are doing. If you go to Dubai, you cannot really be hungry. I'm telling you the truth. The guy selling on the street is happy. The cobbler on the on the corner there is happy the hotel has everybody is happy you can't find someone really frowning you know because you don't have any reason to be frowning you know because nobody's looking for money to stay somewhere mm. uh, we are not planning to run away mm. we're all happy we eat our uh, meat in the evenings we move around and you see them talking to you and these are guys that can buy half of your states mm. they have the money with them and they greet you, celebrate you as a lawyer. They greet you with their two hands, with respect. What I'm trying to say, if you say religion, I want to say, I think it's the way they apply themselves to this so-called um, religion. They are different from other sets of people. So it's, it's, not so, it's just their personality. It's their personal life because it's the same religion. See, some others will tell you, say no to Western education. And they say they are practicing the same religion. And they are killing people for going to school. They are killing people for doing stuff like that. You know, these are things we should begin to ask ourselves. Is it the same religion they are practicing? Is it the same Islam that is operational in, in the Arab Emirates, even in Saudi Arabia now, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is the height of it? 
they won't allow women to drive now. You know, they, are, they have relaxed some of those things. Mm. But in some other areas where they have nothing, they are living in extreme poverty, eating on the ground, and they are telling you they are praying with the Quran. This is Quran that is, that is wrong. That is wrong. I think a lot of them, uh, you know, when you have not seen good life, you want to destroy. Mm. You know, when you are enjoying life, you are happy. You don't want to destroy your neighbor. You want to be happy with him. When everything is okay, you know, look at most of the time in our country, you see our countrymen are very angry because a good number of them cannot feed well. You can't watch your children dropping out of school and um, things are not working where well. your pay is not worthy, it's not worth anything. And at the end of the day, you're angry, you're an angry man. And that suggests to say, even if you preach the Bible, preach the Quran, anger is already there. You're hoping for one day. And you see, every average person that wants to get into power around here is thinking of making money. Okay. But over there, they want to better the system. And when, you need to see how they receive, receive foreign Visitors. nationals. They line up at the airport, tell you we have this, we have these parts you can come to, you can come and have a nice time. We'll give you this ticket for free. Just so, come and so see. So what, what we are saying is, it's, Hospitality. All, it's all the kind of leadership. Yes, that we have and had. they have been taught to respect people, okay. regardless of who they are. All right, now we understand that uh, United Arab Emirates has a new president already, uh, the Dito Facto, that's what they call him now, the mm. Dito Facto uh, leader. Uh, talking about uh, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, uh, that's uh, the brother to yeah. uh, late uh, Sheikh uh, Khalifa. Uh, little wonder, Sheikh Khalifa took over from uh, the father, uh, but this time we have a brother taking over from him. So, what is going on? <laughs> well, uh, uh, as we said before, because I was trying to read whether he, he he doesn't have he didn't have a child of his own, a son of his own, or what happened. Well, uh, some uh, reporters. They've tagged him uh, a strong man, so to say. <laughs> Who now? Sheikh Ali. The new, the new, the new um, uh, uh, Mohammed. So reporters, yeah. and I, when I look at uh, New York Times and mm. all that, they said, the new strong he, man. He was also very, very lawyer. instrumental, yeah, yeah. very lawyer, lawyer, very instrumental, he was quite even during the reign of Sheikh. <coughs> he was lawyer. And considering what we see in Africa and other places, mm. uh, uh, his brother had been down. For several years, he had stroke, mm, paralyzed, mm, mm, mm. but nobody knew anything. The, 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 he, he the was, country was moving. Yeah, but he was moving. So I felt, though I don't know his background much, the new guy, but I think he has been a system. I don't okay. see him as a spoiler. He understands the system. He understands the system. He actually ran the system. He, he <laughs> ran it because that guy has been in yeah. and all that. So uh, it shows that the succession, you know. It's uh, a bit fantastic because we, we have not had any uh, any quarrel behind the scene. Or somebody, you know, maybe some other brothers are saying you want to get power. I'm sure it's an understanding. I think, I'm sure they would have met. They had a meeting. It's a not dynasty. It's a royal house. They would have met or had a meeting. And I think I, I, I think we should give this to the Lake Sheikh Khalifa. I'm sure, I'm sure he was equally a very peaceful personality. He was peaceful because since uh, his demise, uh, people have, uh, have not had terrible tributes. Or maybe in one corner in the country, in the Emirates, that, oh. And no jubilation in some parts of the country that, mm -hmm. thank God, he's late, as so, we had in some other so some it, 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 for me, of the world. He was just a godsend, a, a true son of his father, as I said earlier. That his father specifically groomed him. His father put him at the right places, economic places, defense, ministry of defense, education, uh, the petroleum industry. His father exposed him to the nitty gritty of power. Mm. And, and when he got it, it made a fantastic good sense of it. Okay, so, so let's let's uh, let's uh, look at uh, the uh, dito facto leader now, yeah. the president uh, who we're told has been elected. Uh, talking about uh, Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, uh, how do we think he can begin to fit in into the shoes of Sheikh, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sheikh uh, Khalifa? That was I gave. Thank you very much. I, you know, no one exists alone. Yeah. You don't succeed alone. Yeah. That's the honest truth. And so I must, we, you may not have heard so much about him, but I want to say he had been working 
you know, behind the scene. And uh, for his kind of person, I know there are going to be some tough time with some country like, um, you know, maybe Iran or some other country, you know, that the, 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 uh, the Sheikh Khalifa had some ties with, mm. that he perhaps didn't really see that as what should be. But for respect and for you, it's you, big brother. You can go on with your people, you know. But when the new sheriff shows up now that he's here, he's going to put a whole lot of things in place. I honestly believe that. I think the only uh, the constant thing in life they say is change. Mm. You know, there are some new dynamic way of doing things that is going to bring into their system to ensuring further success and development. But for the fact, I know that man, uh, Sheikh uh, Mohammed, is going to do amazingly well. He's going to surpass what you've seen. I know that very well because. The, 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 the dice is cast already and he's already in it. Over time, he had been in the narrative, he had been there walking. When the brother took ill, he did not jump out. Like you mentioned, why not his son? He's, he, over here in Africa, we fight for our great grandchildren even when we're here. You know, forgetting to know that there are people around you. What Sheikh took over from the father? Yeah, that, yeah directly. That was, uh, yes, he took over from his father. I, I think their, their system is monarchical. Yes, it's, uh, uh, no, it's not always that. It's, uh, yes, it's not about, you know, you are looking at the Bini um, uh, uh, way of... No, mona monarchical is, monarchical is, you know, is you the same pick, thing. You could pick, uh, no, 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 it must it be... Not directly your directly biological, your biological son. Okay. It must be from that from the family. family. From that, that um, the, what do you call it now? That, that um, dynasty. That the dynasty, royal yeah. the royal home. Mm. So it's a council that this Tami yeah, who, yeah. Mm. But it's only the Bini, that's why you are going that way. Mm. It's only the Bini that have it that it must be your son and your son's son like that. So it's not always that way. Now, he had done so well and his brother had, you know, passed on. And they have seen, he had been the one running. They, they all agreed. It was a unanimous, there was no contention. And he didn't say, I want to be. But he had been the one doing it. Who else would do it better than him? It's just like what in the Bible talk, book of Joseph, talking about Joseph and how he told the king what should be done. I said, who else would do it better than you that is saying it now? So that's the case. So the man had been at the helm of affair. He has, been, he has sat on that enormous wealth. He has been there. And he did not misbehave. He had been lawyer. He had access to everything. So they are not after what we accrue to them. They are actually on a mission. Hmm. So they know they are on a mission. They want to deliver. They are taking their people, their nation somewhere. They want to set a new template for the world, new standard, which has already happened now. Because if you go there now, you see all foreign nationals there. Yeah. They are all there. Yeah. You'll be wondering, you want to have, let's go and have a meeting. Let's go to Abu Dhabi. Dubai. Dubai. You, you, you Dubai. 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 They went there. <laughs> they went there. <laughs> <laughs> they went there. Go there. You know, they always went there. They are a place to relax. Yeah. And even for tourists. You know, you uh, went some good case as uh, lawyers or for business. You know, you have some contracts. Let's, so let's go, go to Abu Dhabi. Let's go to Abu Dhabi. Let's go to Abu Dhabi. So it has become a place. You know, where people go to really get good, real hospitality, you know, your hospitality, yeah, and yeah. then you, 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 you enjoy yourself and you are happy with your life. Okay. So these guys have made it, to, you know, they have decided to treat, give the world a treat. Okay. And, All right. they, and, they, and they are doing that without looking back. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Barrister Dr. Awol Saige. There, we're looking at uh, the life and time of uh, Sheikh Khalifa. Uh, talking about uh, the late president of United Arab Emirates. Now, if you've been to Dubai, if you've been to Abu Dhabi, the first thing that uh, we uh, come to your notice is uh, the masterpiece mm. of what city uh, life, modern city life is all about. Then, of course, if you come back to uh, your own country, if you go back to your own country, uh, you begin to wonder, what is uh, your leader, your leaders, what are they doing, your president, what is he doing? Well, we'll just take a short pause now. When we come back, we're going to be uh, trying to draw some comparison here and see how other world leaders uh, can learn from uh, Sheikh. Don't forget that the program is International Forum. We'll be right back.
All right, thank you one more time. The program is still here in the television forum on independent television. And of course, uh, you do know that uh, this uh, show, we look at global events, uh, world personalities, and uh, of course, uh, global trends. So today, we are looking at uh, Sheikh Khalifa, uh, the late president of United Arab Emirates. Now, we understand, just like what we said a while ago, that uh, there is a new uh, president there, the former Dito uh, facto leader, talking about uh, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al uh, Nayan, uh, who has been elected as uh, the President of United Arab Emirates. Now, gentlemen, back to Sheikh uh, Khalifa. Let's uh, look at, um, uh, you know, the way some other world leaders, uh, the way they rule, uh, the way they administer rulership. Now, if they are to learn from uh, Sheikh Khalifa, where exactly uh, should they start from? Now, when I say world leaders, I'm not trying to direct uh, you know, that question to any particular world leader. But we know some of the world leaders that are among the worst world <laughs> leaders. <laughs> you know, so let's, uh, at the risk of not necessarily mentioning names. names. So let's, uh, where do you think they should start from? Uh, no, well, at least because uh, fundamentally, corruption is an issue globally. Corruption destroys. Corruption is the greatest virus that can pull out a nation. Corruption is what has pulled Nigeria to where we are. Corruption is what has pulled Africa to where Africa is. That is a fact of the matter. I think what should be learned is significant, uh, you know, lesson that what leaders should learn. They should just shun corruption. There's enough money. Just, in that, just as in the UAE, not Arab Emirates. The country is sitting on top of, you know, but unless pit of oil reserve, gas reserves. But Sheikh Khalifa could have decided to embezzle and act insane by taking some of the money to New York, to London, and all that. Or maybe to Switzerland. To Switzerland. Those are what Sabacha did. But he didn't do that. He said, we have enough. We are sitting on, on billions of dollars. But don't, let us look at some of their laws, uh, because uh, we understand that uh, UAE is one of the nations that has uh, one of the stringent uh, laws when it comes to uh, corruption. Uh, they don't smear you. They don't pity you. Once you are caught, you go in for it. So don't you think this may be something that may have worked out for them? Is it not the human beings there that they institutionalize those policies and it has worked and it's working? Is it not say, how many laws, don't you have laws <laughs> against <laughs> corruption? Against corruption in Nigeria. We have EFCC, we have ICPC. Other nations, they have a similar, you know. But let's give it to the leaders in uh, United Arab Emirates. They just don't fantastically well. They shun corruption. Because there, there, there is so much, there is so much wet. It's, in advantage, they said, Dubai, uh, Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi. Yeah. some of the wet, wettiest cities in the world. But I was going through the analysis somewhere. And the country is, is, is the third largest economy in, uh, in, uh, in, in the Middle East. So they decided to make things work. So African leaders, even in the Middle East, even well, there are some terrible countries, even in, uh, in Latin America, mm. that are not doing well. So the lesson is that they should show corruption. Let the institution work. Because if the institution is not working, just as you said, you've been to Dubai. I, I have not been there. But we read a lot about this thing. It, the, the system is working. The, the president or leader should make their country work. Just as the uh, uh, United Arab Emirates uh, is working, courtesy, the missionary and visionary dispositions of uh, Sheikh Khalifa and people that have been working with him. It's a collective leadership, as we said. It's mm -hmm. not a one man. Mm -hmm. So it takes a leader who has a torchlight, who points the way, who says, This is where we are going. To let African leaders, let Nigerian leaders, let world leaders in Latin America and everywhere, let them be visionary. Let them let the decision work. Let them show corruption. Is it, 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 it not lunacy, my brother? The money about has stole. If after his death. The, the latest that has just been recovered <laughs> is about uh, 20, $28 million. It's lunatical. It's insane. You, what does it take us to hit? 
you know, to, mm. to be contented. Mm. What do you want to eat, my brother? Not to our world, you Do we eat money? Those that Yoruba will say, they will, uh, somebody is eating money. He said, I mean, somebody put money in his mouth and eat. One leader should take a cue from what the learned Sheikh Khalifa has done. Okay. Now, Barista will say, Corruption. Get, yeah. If you show it. Yeah. Barista will say, get, you've been to Dubai so many times. And uh, perhaps you've also noticed, uh, you know, the way things are done there, most especially uh, the fight against corruption. Uh, Dubai is not the nation, United Arab Emirates yeah, is yeah. not a nation that uh, uh, tolerates corruption. They are very strict, strict. when it comes to corruption. Uh, so how, what do you think they are doing that other world leaders should learn from? Thank you very much. Uh, you see, a nation that joke with corruption is going nowhere. It's going nowhere. You know, I want to take uh, Michael Jackson. Is there any nation that jokes with corruption? Several, several, several nations. nations. Are you sure? Oh, yes, it's because with you it. start gambling, gambling, you know, <laughs> playing around, you know. You have somebody's corrupt or you've got this, and then you take the person to court, and then the lawyers are filing play for bail game. application. <laughs> not even play by game. Play they are not filing for play, bail application, and then they, you now eventually convict the person, and then the president grants pardon. <laughs> over time, pardon, over time, pardon. Yeah. and you the person know, can contest, can contest for senatorial <laughs> seats again. You know, these are come out the, the jokes <laughs> we see. You know, you know, in civilized climate and where people are really serious minded, yeah, if yeah, you permit yeah. it, like look at Michael Jackson said. He said, "If you want to change the world, that yeah. man standing in the mirror, that's you. You're looking at yourself in the mirror. Change that man, mm. and you change the world. You change the you world. Change the world. So you that is wanting to stop corruption, who are you? Mahatma Gandhi. Mm. A woman met him and said, "My son is consuming sugar, and I want you to advise him." He said he checked himself. Ah, I take so much of sugar too. He said, "Madam, go, send your son away. Twenty-one days from now, I will attend to him." He stopped taking sugar mm. for twenty-one days, and when he saw that he could leave, mm. he now called the boy, "Come, see what you have to do and to stop this." I think that is it. Now, if you know that you only have a time, Whitley Houston said a moment in time. Mm. You only have one moment in time. Mm. You only have one life to live. Wow. You are not going to live forever. Never. So where are you taking all the money to? So you should know the reality of the end of your life. So what is now this madness of going to amass this wow. and amass that? There was somebody that was Princess Diana. All over the world, the most photographed woman in the 19th century, they said. I read that and see how she's no more. Look at Mary and Babangida. Mm. All those great names you had before now, they are no more. All we remember is what they did. Mm. So if we can inculcate this into our leaders, into our people, because before they become leaders, they were once followers. So we should change. And now I'm not only blaming the ruling class or the, those in power. It starts from us too. But don't you also think that uh, some of the efforts, because I was also reading a piece and uh, somebody was trying to... Uh, criticize uh, the late uh, Sheikh uh, Khalifa. Yes. And uh, he said that some of uh, the uh, measures were too stringent. Mm -hmm. Imagine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, saying that you have to die by hanging if you are caught mm -hmm. in corruption, you, the, the penalty I, I... is dealt and all that. Now, uh, for that person, uh, this is the 21st century. That's very, very That's where we get uh, it from, sir. humane. We, we... Uh, so for a globe, for a world that is looking for a more humane laws, uh, regulations, and all that. Do you think we should be thinking of uh, things like that? Don't in, you think that uh, United Arab Emirates perhaps may be one of the nations that is anti-human? That's why they are direction. successful. <laughs> so for you to, the price of greatness is not, is enormous. Ah, the price discipline. of attaining great height is enormous. You need to, be, like the I discipline. said, they are very disciplined people. You see a billionaire moving simply on the street, won't trump on another person. Mm. A comma counselor won't greet you anymore. Wow. We use the siren to chase you off the road and pour you dirty water if you are not. You know, you see what people do because of little opportunity they have. No respect anymore. Look at you and say, Evans, how are you doing now? You know, that kind of talk. Somebody you knew when you left secondary school. So things like that, because you have been given little opportunity to serve as SSA to some governor somewhere. You don't have respect for elders anymore. I don't think that is the proper way. Now, these guys have defined it. Whether you call it 21st century madness or whatever, it's working for them. Okay. Look at China. Go and steal there and see. Chinese people, they are not very straightforward people. Mm -hmm. They're into a lot of naughty stuff. Mm. But they know when well, you are strict. cut, yeah. you are killed. The moment you know some persons are going to be killed, when they roll is killed some people. Ghana started, um, you know, there's something about it. You say, well, I was like, are you not a lawyer again or whatever? I'm still a lawyer. 
But I'm only telling you that what we really want, we have to, have to take every, every, you know, every, you know, how do I put it in as desperate um, situation yeah. requires yeah. some Re desperate. Desperate. You, you understand? Yeah. We are, this is an epidemic in, the, in Africa now. Mm. Look at what we are doing. Look at, look at what is happening in Africa. Leave Nigeria, I'm not talking about Nigeria. Nigeria actually have something to live for. At least even that government, people are surviving. There are some African countries that can't survive. All they needed was good leadership. And they, there's nothing there. Leaders are doing nothing and they are just looting them dry and moving back and forth, traveling, not even respected around the world, and yet they don't feel that as an issue. And that's what I'm talking about. So we need to start setting pace. I don't you know, remember Lorek Bagu now, who didn't yeah, want to go and how he was being humiliated of. So this, it, it doesn't make any sense. Bagu it back. doesn't make any sense. So when we once change we need to work for it okay we cannot just wake up one morning and expect things to start working road being fixed well creating road and town roads during the rainy seasons it's all known to african leaders mm. you know when we, when you know you can always cut corners that's the time you come out to say this is what i'm doing okay i don't think that all right to about about let's narrow this whole discussion a bit uh, to uh, nigeria the 2023 presidential election is fast approaching as a matter of fact, uh, some uh, political parties are going to be having their primaries uh, very soon. Now, uh, these aspirants that will become candidates uh, for these political parties, let's begin to motivate them. Uh, things that they should learn from uh, Sheikh, well, it's not necessarily the same country, this different uh, yeah. ideology and all that. But let's look at the personality traits, uh, things they should learn from uh, Sheikh. Well, let me quickly say something. You say... <laughs> It's a, it's a Muslim country. It is. Yeah. It is. It's part of uh, uh, Islam. Islam. Yeah. So they are very liberal. Yeah. They are liberal. So most of the Nigerian leaders... When you say Libra, that becomes an issue. No, Libra you know I said, that, when, that, I, when I said, you see, they don't use their faith to hurt yours. Yeah, they don't, yeah. Mm. They want also, because, uh, you, you should understand that. Yeah. You say, well, we practice Islam, we practice Islam. I remember at the time I was even there during their fasting period. Mm. You know, I needed to eat. They said, oh, please, don't eat publicly. They took me inside. Oh, they told you that? Yeah. Say, please don't eat public because you know it's fast. You know, they like, come, just come, come. come. They took me inside. Irrespective of your own religion. Irrespective, you understand, please. But mm -hmm. they would have allowed you to. You know, because they were fasting they and were people fasting. were all around there, they now say, please, just for this period, go in. But some would say, well, you don't even have to eat, you should join us. <laughs> you know, they say, allow me to have my time mm. with my meal. All right, so is, the candidate joining you. Yeah. So, the less, you see, like I just, I just said, there is this. It's, it, it's an Islamic country. Sorry, the, the practice uh, Islamic it's religion. Islam, yeah. And majority, we have uh, majority of our leaders. I mean, Muslims who have, are Muslim uh, leaders. I don't think I lean to religion. Exactly. It, it's a fact of the matter. Look at what happened recently. I'm not running for what we are discussing. Somebody just said Jesus made me to pass exam in college education. Mm. Sokoto. But I see how so do not that anyway. So do not. No, is that yeah, what, that's but, what you said. I am a columnist. Yeah, but I most, my investigation. But most, most Islamic leaders have also come out to. No, you know, what I wanted to say is that was that what she said, or she said that she should be posting nonsense posts on the. No, we are talking about. We are talking about the situation now. We don't have to take one side. But she blasphemed. For me, she allegedly blasphemed. She allegedly blasphemed. But for me. Yeah, you know, for one of the eyewitnesses, one of the students who were who who watched the drama, mm. said, ah, they were not chatting. So, uh, uh, oh, how did you pass the last uh, semester exam? Uh, oh, is this also? Thank God, Jesus. And I said, why? Why are you calling Jesus? So she knows she did not really speak against. Uh, the Sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah, the, I, I want to, you know, you know where I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to digress. There's something I want to quickly state. Yeah. There was no chat with to respect to the to the respect of what you are saying now. Mm. The chat that was made, given to the, the social top, media chat. The social media chat yeah. is that she said they should stop posting nonsense posts. That was what. It was. Mm. What you are saying is somebody reporting it. Yeah. Who was there? Mm. Who was there? That is not verified. Mm. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we should um, stay away from things like that that we cannot. Uh, okay. <laughs> With the points, let's announce. Uh, <laughs> let's not go into all of that. So but that mm. means that we should, the Nigerian leaders should take a leaf, should borrow a leaf. 2023 election is coming. Unfortunately, one of the presidential hopefuls, you will say hopeful, mm. I don't want to mention names. I'm not prepared to mention names. One of the presidential hopefuls, 
he shut down his uh, his message uh, in the social media concerning the well he, he also came out to 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 say the reason why he, he said he did not he, approve. he doesn't have any he doesn't have any excuse he said he did not approve that uh, why would he not approve that <laughs> he has been appro approving the other messages there so what i'm trying to say is that nigerian leaders should be selfless it should remove religion the people she Khalifa and his and his a successful team. I'm not sure they, they two rejoin to administration. Mm, that's, they, that's it. If they two rejoin yeah. administration, they wouldn't have gotten the success that they've they achieved. Yeah. So Nigerian leaders should just expand religion, expand uh, the, you know all these uh, uh, factors mm -hmm. that are taking us back. I got this. We should move on. I want to challenge Nigerian people. It should look for the presidential aspirant that will better their lot, that will take over the next level. Religion cannot save Nigeria. Nigeria is the, is, the, is the most populous black nation on net, and we are sitting on wet. Nigeria is one of the wettiest countries on net. Even as the uh, Ukraine war is going on, mm. drama is going on in. Nigeria is a beautiful pride, even today. Exactly. Beautiful uh, pride, in terms of, uh, uh, per, you know, oil. Yeah. You know, so Nigeria leaders should should take a leap, borrow a leap for what has happened in the uh, United Arab, Arab Emirates. Emirates. And the political aspirants that are coming up, they should be nationalistic. They should be nationalistic. One of the, one of the uh, presidential aspirants or hopeful, the other day, he said he was going to have a meeting in Dubai. Why not have a meeting in, uh, in uh, Katangora or somewhere? Is it not people that beat uh, Dubai? Why, why can't we talk? The other day, one, one, one governor in uh, Cross River, what is his name? Turn the budu, budu, whatever. It was something fantastic. Yeah. Donald Duke. Donald Duke, fantastic. We have all sort of, all sort of, uh, you know, uh, you, uh, you know, the, we are blessed here with landmass. What have you? Nigerian leaders should wake up. Nigerian people should wake up. They should ensure that the right people get this thing. Mm. They should not, they, they should not let money. They should not set their conscience. Because when we are talking about Sheikh uh, Khalifa, we have to think of our own country. We're in a mess. Mm. A leader came in 2015, said he's going to fight corruption. People who, who, were, who, were duly, who were duly prosecuted and sent to jail, eight years later, you, got, you led the National Council of State to grant them pardon. Where are we going? So, so we are saying that uh, maybe they were too stringent in the United Arab Emirates. That if you do this, they will cut your leg. To do this, you are going for it. China go to where China is. I have already multi turned the red China. Mm -hmm. China go to where they are because they said we must wake up. Exactly. How many years did it take uh, China to live with the United States? It is discipline. Mm. Hard work. Hard work. They see corruption as an issue. They say if you do it, you are going down. Sabotage. Can't we do that here? So it is a, uh, it is a, we are we are we 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 are the threshold of another election. Anyway, gentlemen, so uh, Nigerians should wake up. Nigerian electorate should wake up. Yeah. As we remember, as we talk about the the, the, the wonders, mm. the I'm miracle. Sure. We say the miracle of the, the Abu Dhabi or something. Mm. <laughs> the miracle, mm. administrative miracle that has from from that country. Mm. As we reflect on it today, it's challenging us. Let Nigerians wake up. Look at Nigerians buying over 100 million for a presidential form. Mm. Anyway. Is, is, it not, is, is that not insanity? Yeah. G gentlemen, uh, the so we should wake up. tribute uh, to Sheikh uh, Khalifa yeah, it is, is, is endless. Uh, world Fantastic leaders guy. have been pouring in their tributes. Uh, we understand that uh, Donald Trump <laughs> Donald Trump also oh, uh, yeah. made so, a yeah. tribute. Oh, a big time uh, irrespective man. of yeah. the fact that they were really not friends while he ah. was president and all that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, the, uh, Guan, the China president now, Yu Jinping, also made his own tribute and all that. And of course, our own president, President Mohamed Buhari, has also made his own uh, tribute for uh, Sheikh Khalifa. Uh, so uh, as we draw this discussion to a conclusion this afternoon, let, let's try to uh, set agenda for uh, the new president now. Talking about uh, Mohammed bin Zayed al-Nayan, uh, uh, Dr. 
Okay, I don't get that. What are you trying to say? Now, the new agenda. president now, let's agenda give him an agenda so that when he has to go to Dubai, Dubai will still look like <laughs> where well, he, you, you were well, once. I, I, don't, I don't think we... The, the, he has been in the picture, like I said. Mm, but he's not. He's president now. He was not president then. He wasn't president then, but he was running. The, 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 he was at the side. Well, now, now, yeah, now that he's given the mantle of leadership. leadership. Obviously, they have their projects running and they have their vision. Like I said, is a vision and a mission. This vision is ongoing. Or rather, they are on a mission to realizing this overwhelming vision, which I pray will span and get into all other regions of the world. Of the world. Of the world. Mm. Because as you journey through, seeing them, I, I remember buying a book of the Dubai um, leader there. I just bought his book. When I got into Burj Khalifa and I came down and I said, no, let me read. And they will show you these are the men that built this place. You, know, you need to start reading about them. I know our leaders go everywhere. They are there. And they, they do make decisions. They, 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 they reach decisions. No, they, you, 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 are, you, are, you, are, you have all their materials there. So why not pick up one and just try to talk to one? Can, can, we, can you advise me? I think our leaders, we're talking about you know, the 2023 election. It's all about running to pick up form and wanting to be president to repeat the, the mistake of the past and start blaming whoever was there before. I think that's been the system. Now, make up your mind that I want to change. I, had, I don't want to sound like maybe I'm campaigning. Mm. One of the aspirants said, Haiti had issues, he went there. He's been going around Nigeria. That's for former governor. This is what I want to do, and this is what I intend to do. He's talking to Nigeria. He's engaging everybody. And you have his profile. You see this man. He has not uh, upgraded himself. He has not taken money from nowhere. EFCC have screened him. He's clean. He left the state rich, richer than when he met it. And the man said, this is what I want to do. And I think people like that. We don't need to start going about the bush. It's not sound English because I'm senior advocate of law and a professor <laughs> or whatever. That's what we don't need. We don't need a legal luminary, like we call it. We don't need a, <laughs> you don't need one big name. We, we don't need guy. somebody who can fix, <laughs> who can do the job. A leader. Uh, we need a leader who yeah. will lead the people. Leader, leadership is all about inspiring people. You know, the, the, the system we operate here is that I know everything. You say, is the leader there? You know that, that funny principle. Mm -hmm. When you say the leader is talking, shut your mouth. That's not it. But the leader is actually to inspire Others. every other person yeah. to coming up and doing that which he ought to do. I think that is basically what it is. Okay. A certain agenda oh, for, oh, him so is for him to keep up with the good work. And then, um, you know, as far from greater heights, so as other nations around the world, we join in this great work they are doing. And I okay, celebrate the them. Yeah. I minutes. see the new ESMA uh, running the vision that was started by his brother. Mm. I don't see him uh, derailing the, the vision. I see him running with it. So, because uh, they are all being, uh, you know, how would I put it? They are, they are all being intoxicated mm. with the sources. Because here the tributes pouring in from northwest and east it's enough to to spoil him more to do fantastic things for his mm -hmm. people so i see him running with the vision not looking by sword so that he's going to be a shiny example to the entire world okay all right thank you uh, so much uh, gentlemen the which are a Butako, a human rights activist and uh, a resolution expert public affairs analyst and also uh, dr uh, Barista Dr. Awo Osage, talking about uh, Sheikh uh, Khalifa, uh, the late uh, President of United Arab Emirates. For more than, from 1971 till, yeah. till date now, is, more than, is, is about more than 50 years, mm -hmm. if I get my accounts uh, correct. More than 50 years, and of course, uh, that great nation, United Arab Emirates. As a matter of fact, for Dubai, we understand that it was actually a desert. It was you know, a desert. That these people came on board and they turned that desert into a fantastic city that uh, you and I are uh, hurried to today. So we just pray that uh, all the world leaders uh, should take a cue uh, from uh, Sheikh Khalifa uh, so that uh, when they depart, uh, the world will talk about them. He's been since buried, and uh, we also send our tributes here uh, to the family. We pray that God Almighty. Uh, we accept his soul. Amen. All right, so that's the program today. My name is Evans Nukuge. The program is going to return same time next week. Bye-bye and God bless you.